Good evening, friends. Something I really love about being a Quaker and being a member of the Religious Society of Friends is that there is a sensible reason for almost everything that we do together, including nominations. <laughs> and not only that, more than that, there's very often a very specifically religious reason why we do what we do. So when you get frustrated with the way that friends do things, using the Quaker business method, negotiating through our organisational structure, just remember that there will be a deep underlying spiritual reason why it is as it is, and we just have to refresh our minds with an understanding of what that is. Okay, so Meeting for Sufferings is our National Representative Council, and it acts as the yearly meeting decision-making body in between each yearly meeting. I think of it sometimes as it's our equivalent of a synod, and your area meeting representatives attend. They bring their ministry to our meetings and then report back to you in your home meetings. We are very much a networking, a communicating body, enabling the whole of our yearly meeting to link together as one body. Now, Ursula asked you for a show of hands, so I'm going to do the same, if that's okay. How many of you have served as Meeting for Suffering's uh, representatives in your life as a Quaker? <laughs> there you are, lots. But then, how many of you have got involved with the work of your current reps by supporting and liaising with them? So that should, I'd like that to be everybody. I would like to see that everybody's supporting their reps through the area meetings, um, you know, and, and uh, receiving the report from your rep and encouraging your rep. And it's all about communication, as I say, communication and network. Please do support them. Meeting for Sufferings is your body within our organisation, and it represents the church, indeed all our congregations. Now, you'll hear on Monday morning from the trustees um, about the centrally managed work of Britain Yearly Meeting, and some of you might have picked up um, our faith, our work. Sometimes it's, we can think of it as our charity. We will hear about the enormous program of work that is undertaken on our behalf um, on, on Monday morning. But all of this has originated at some time with a concern that has passed through Meeting for Sufferings. And over a lifetime of 350 years, which we've heard already um, about that anniversary, it has grown and changed. Meeting for Sufferings and your reps ensure that it has its ear to the ground in being aware of the work. We hear from the central committees, we hear from the trustees, we hear from other parts of the yearly meetings, and then we also hear from each other and the work that is going on within all our various area meetings. So how have we worked in 2017? Well, things to celebrate about how we work. We aim to be a whole committee or council, meeting under the guidance of the Spirit in accordance with our business method. And two of our meetings in 2017 were particularly noteworthy. In October, for the first time, we met in Manchester, not in London. It was a different venue. And, and some invited local friends joined us. Um, and it was a bit of an experiment, but I think we generally felt it was quite successful. We want Meeting for Sufferings to be less remote to local friends. We want our proceedings to be more easily accessed. Our minutes are freely available on the website. Anybody can look at them. And then, uh, so that was the first one in October in Manchester. And then in December, where we were meeting in London, um, we were in this room and we were joined by the young people who were participating in their annual day at Friends House. And on this occasion, some joined us in our um, sessions. They joined in our worship and in our ministry and contributed to the worship. So that's something of how we've worked. What have we done? Well, I don't really intend to go through this um, with a fine tooth comb. It's in Appendix C on page 21. We assume that you've read um, our report, but can we just remind ourselves that um, for us, if you like, looking inwards, we've considered our local meetings and our use of the framework 
that we agreed in 2015, Our Faith in the Future. Our Faith in the Future is a document, a visionary document for all of us to use. So how can we work towards this vision? What can we do? What can you do to help build the kingdom of God here on earth? And as requested by Yearly Meeting 2017, last year, we have started a process of trying to look at barriers to diversity within our ways of working, in the first instance. We've also asked area meetings to feed back to us about their own situation. And we have been considering the way in which decisions are made for the centrally managed work, and we'll return to this later in this uh, new year, and we'll have new representatives um, joining us for our next meeting in July. Looking outwards, what have we done? We've agreed statements about fracking and a manifesto about sanctuary everywhere. Well, I hope, friends, that you've, um, you're aware of those. And we've shared information about the various witness of our area meetings so that we can work more effectively together. Now, friends, we've got two working groups that have been set up and to answer their report through Meeting for Sufferings to Yearly Meeting. Um, you heard, of course, how Yearly Meeting gives sufferings things to do. It's um, part of how we work, isn't it? So, firstly, um, the, sorry, two working groups. The first uh, group, then, the Britain Yearly Meeting Sustainability Group, it has been working for the past six years to bring to life in all our meetings the Canterbury commitment, commitment that was made in 2011, to becoming a low-carbon, sustainable community. The group has supported us in trying to live our lives as Quakers in demonstration of our values. We all need to help to see, see what God requires of us in our own specific situations. In February of this year, we received a report, of course, last year. Every year we receive a report from the Sustainability Group. But in February this year, we received a detailed report of their work. Um, and as recorded in our minute of February, we were recognizing that we still need to see more engagement from individuals, local meetings, and area meetings across the yearly meeting if we really want to see that Quaker values are active in the world. There's a challenge, friends. And at our last meeting in April, we heard from the group that had been set up to review this work. They recommend that we should consider taking the work forward by different mechanisms, embedding sustainability issues in all our practice. And we are holding a meeting in July of various stakeholders, representatives from all central committees and other stakeholders. And we're not really quite sure, friends, of the, how the way forward will be. And we pray, and we hope that you will all pray with us, that we will be guided as to the right way forward to ensure that this yearly meeting concern, like our concern for peace, is embodied in everything that we do. And we'll return to this in the autumn at Sufferings, and we'll report again to yearly meeting next year. And our second working group is the Book of Discipline Review Preparation Group, which reported to us in December, and we agreed that it was time for yearly meeting to consider that we should review our book of discipline. I don't need to say any more about this right now, because the yearly meeting agenda is pretty full of it. You've got a copy of our minutes from December. Um, but needless to say, sufferings felt that it was right to go forward. You've seen our minute. The feeling was very much that we need to proclaim the good news in a way that is easily accessible for all today in the 21st century. Both Jesus Christ and George Fox exhorted us to go out and proclaim the truths that we have found, that God can speak to us directly, that God is love, and that there is that of God in each of us. We should be bold in describing the truth as it has been revealed to us, and in a way that is understood by all those around us. Why should we keep good news to ourselves? And as we go forward in faith, 
I'm reminded of the words of the Apostle Paul. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. And this was written by Paul from jail to his young disciple Timothy, 2 Timothy 1.14. And so, friends, Meeting for Sufferings has met five times in 2017 and covered many items of business. We have checked our work against the list of functions required of us by Quaker Faith and Practice in Chapter 7, Paragraph 2. There's a great long list, A to Q or something like this, of things that we should be doing. And we, we've checked against that. We are looking forward to the new triennium and to the challenges that the future will bring. We go forward under the guidance of the Spirit and we pray that our experience and our expression of God's grace to us will only increase. Those who are interested to hear more about our work and challenges or wish to make contributions to help us in our work are very welcome to our session which is on Sunday afternoon at half past five in the George Fox Room and we can explore these issues further. Thank you, friends.